assalamu alaikum this is the presentation for medical students by dr mumtaz ahmed umar and today's topic is diphtheria introduction diphtheria is an acute toxin mediated specific infection which is caused by a toxigenic bacteria known as cornibacterium diphtheriae cornibacterium diphtheriae is a gram positive bacillus which is club shaped it is very contagious and potentially life threatening bacterial disease it is a localized infectious disease which usually attacks the mucous membranes of the nose and throat and may extend into the larynx epidemiology transmission transmission is most often person to person as it is a droplet infection so the spread from the respiratory tract in the form of small drop droplets when one is coughing or sneezing is common rarely transmission may occur from the skin lesions or the articles soiled by the discharges from the lesions of the infected person but this mode is very rare the most common mode is a droplet infection pathogenesis and pathology the susceptible persons they usually acquire the toxigenic diphtheria bacilli in the nasopharynx skin in the middle ear via the eustachian tube or the nose the uh, organism it produces an exotoxin which inhibits the cellular protein synthesis and it is responsible for the local tissue destruction and the formation of the pseudo membrane which is pathogenic for diphtheria some persons they are carriers of this disease meaning that they harbor the virus uh, bacteria but their throat uh, they harbor the bacteria in their throat but they have no symptoms clinical features the incubation period of diphtheria is from 2 to 6 days it usually starts and begins as a sore throat and generalized body aches and pains and malaise the fever is modest but there will be marked tachycardia however as already mentioned the diagnostic feature for diphtheria is appearance of a grayish white membrane on the tonsil this membrane it has a well defined edge it is firm and uh, adhere adherent with a surround uh, surrounding zone of inflammation in 2 to 3 days the uh, cornibacterium diphtheriae it destroys the healthy tissues in the respiratory system the pseudo membrane it is characterized by the formation of a dense gray debris layer which is composed of a mixture of dead necrosed cells fibrin red blood cells white blood cells and the organism it can cover the tissues in the nose tonsil or the voice box and throat making it very hard to breathe and swallow then other feature is the bull neck appearance the uh, cervical lymph nodes especially the jugular digastric lymph nodes they become enlarged swollen and tender diphtheria it may appear as an acute infection in the form of membrane over the tonsil coinciding with the membranous tonsillitis or in the form of nasal infection or skin wound or conjunctival infection but they are very rare if not treated immediately as it is very uh, potentially uh, fatal disease it can also lead to complications the first and foremost may be the laryngeal obstruction or paralysis uh, then there will be effect on the heart and peripheral neuropathy we will see that in the later on now the facial or the pharyngeal diphtheria so you should remember that the proper name for the pharyngeal diphtheria is facial diphtheria and not only diphtheria because diphtheria can be laryngeal nasopharyngeal or cutaneous so you have to mention in your answer whenever you have been given a scenario the facial diphtheria rather than only diphtheria if the scenario is of pharyngeal diphtheria so children they are affected more and oropharynx is the most commonly involved site insidious it is of insidious onset the disease 
of uh, is of insidious onset with the formation of exudative pharyngitis the exudate it spreads to form the adherent pseudo membrane over the tonsils and it can spread to the soft tissue uh, rather soft palate and posterior pharyngeal wall the important point for the pseudo membrane of the diphtheria is that it does not confined only to the tonsil but it spreads beyond the confines of the tonsil so it can spread to the soft palate then to the posterior pharyngeal wall extend upwards to the nasopharynx and lower down to involve the larynx so it can lead to respiratory obstruction and even death by asphyxiation but still if not treated properly and patient survive the obstruction the patient may die of heart uh, problems as already seen in the complication and we'll see what later on uh, problems with the heart and with the neural paralysis neuropathies fever patient may present with fever but it seldom rises above 38 degree centigrade but general appearance of patient is very toxic as compared to the patients with acute membranous or follicular tonsillitis the patients with diphtheria they are more toxic looking so if we see in this picture uh, the tonsils they are covered with the membrane but also if you visualize this is the uvula it is also covered with the membrane and it is extending in posteriorly also and on the tongue also slightly here you can more clearly visualize the membrane is approaching the soft palate from the tonsil to the soft palate so this is all the area so upper cervical area this is the area of the jugular digastric lymph node so this area it is swollen so this is like a bull's neck the upper cervical area the lymph nodes they are very swollen and tender so this is a bull neck appearance now laryngeal diphtheria it can be an extension of the pharyngeal form which is the more often uh, occurrence and the only site involved rarely meaning that isolated laryngeal diphtheria is very rare to occur the symptoms include again the fever will be mild uh, but now the patient they present with hoarseness dyspnea barking cough malaise and breathing difficulty why because the pseudo membrane it leads to airway obstruction and if it continues without treatment then patient may come at become comatose and death or without even comatosing the patient may die due to asphyxiation so this is a picture uh, taken from the net uh, and this patient if you visualize there are mild secretions and membrane but it is dissolving because this patient is on treatment for 3 to 4 days uh, at the start it will be very difficult to do the uh, flexible endoscopy because everything inside it will be very fragile and swollen so one cannot visualize clearly and the thick tenacious secretions and the membrane covering so it become difficult to visualize but as the patient they may present with breathing difficulty or respiratory obstruction so alternative pathway of airway has to be established so this is in such patients you may have to perform tracheostomy so this is a tracheostomy of child due to respiratory obstruction because airway maintenance is the first step of emergency management so we have to maintain the airway and intubating such patients is very difficult as everything inside will be fragile and you will just injure more if you try to intubate so we have to perform tracheostomy in such patients investigations so the uh, specific investigation the diagnostic investigation i'll tell you but because it is an acute infection so we will perform blood cbc and there will be leukocytosis then uh, urine are routine examination of the urine it may show protein urea the diagnostic test however is the throat swab for culture and microbiological purposes to identify 
the bacteria okay but you should know that throat swab it takes at least 72 hours to get the result so whenever there is strong suspicion of diphtheria the treatment has to be started after taking the throat swab without waiting for the culture reports and nowadays pcr test is also being performed to detect the toxin inside uh, uh, but its uh, diagnostic value for uh, diphtheria uh, how much sensitive this is it is still under consideration but it is still being performed in some areas treatment so as i already said treatment should begin as soon possible once an appropriate swabs have been taken before waiting for the micro biological confirmation in all the patients where there is clinical suspicion of diphtheria because it if the treatment is delayed it this disease can become fatal so what you do you need to admit the patient with strict isolation as it is a droplet contagious infection so strict isolation is mandatory very good if there is a separate room so that area should be isolated then maintain the intravenous line in some cases we may need, we may need to pass the ng tube for feeding as the patient is toxic and not eating properly using both antitoxin and antibiotics is mandatory for neutralization of the toxin by antitoxin and killing of the bacteria with antibiotics if you just use any one of them then it will not serve the purpose if you only give antitoxin yes it will clear out the toxin but the bacteria is still there and it will start continue to produce the toxin and its other bacterial or infective process and if you only give antibiotic it will kill the bacteria so no more toxin will be produced but what the what, what is uh, already has been produced it will still remain there so we have to prescribe both the antibiotics and the antitoxin so diphtheria antitoxin it is produced in the horse through horse serum earlier use of the antitoxin it will prevent the progression of disease the dosage of antitoxin it depends upon the time of presentation and uh, the signs i mean where how much uh, the membrane it has spread so 20000 to 40000 units if the patient present within 48 hours and membrane is only confined to the tonsils however the dose it increases 80000 to 120000 units if the presentation is late more than 48 hours or the membrane become extensive and uh, spread beyond the tonsil antitoxin one vial of antitoxin it contains 10000 units antitoxin is given in normal saline infusion in at least 60 minutes but before giving that uh, antitoxin uh, the doctor has to check for the sensitivity by doing the by giving the intracutaneous injection and look for any signs of sensitivity and if the patient it becomes sens if he is sensitive he or she is sensitive then desensitization has to be done before uh, giving uh, the antitoxin the antibiotics uh, it will prevent the further production of the toxin it will again control the local infection and the reduction of transmission to others so most uh, commonly given antibiotic is the benzyl penicillin 600 mg 6 hourly intramuscular injection or the amoxicillin capsule 500 mg 8 hourly in those who are sensitive to penicillin group then we have to give erythromycin complications exotoxin which is produced by the corny bacterium diphtheria is toxic to heart and the nerves so uh, complications in the cardiac muscle uh, car, uh, in the heart it will cause myocarditis cardiac arrhythmias or acute circulatory failure they all can lead to death of the patient these cardiac complication it usually appears in two weeks time while the neuropathy or neural problems they appear in the third week 
so it may the patient may then develop motor neuropathy paralysis of the soft palate or there will be paralysis of the eye muscles limbs or diaphragm which may be affected afterwards as you all know prevention is better than cure the prevention it depends upon adequate immunization with diphtheria toxoid it is given in to every child in the form of epi immunization as a component in dpt which is diphtheria pertussis and tetanus carriers should be given erythromycin for 7 days so to uh, wash away the bacteria thank you